You can't get blood from a stone, but it turns out you can get oxygen from one, and that is a weird science fact that boggles my mind. I once saw a Neil deGrasse Tyson video raining on the parade of sci-fi fanatic, because he said in sci-fi space travel where you see these barren lands with no plant life, if a planet isn't green, we wouldn't be able to breathe. And that's because oxygen has abandonment issues, and it doesn't like being single. Oxygen is highly reactive. It will jump into a relationship with any other atom that comes along. It quickly turns into water, or carbon dioxide, or carbon monoxide, hydrogen peroxide, nitrous oxide, rust. It's not picky, it just doesn't want to be lonely. But for us to breathe and survive, we need free oxygen, single oxygen atoms that are free to have that chemical reaction and get hitched inside of us so we can burn our calories to make energy. And it's always been believed that the only organic way a planet could have enough free oxygen for our metabolisms to play atomic matchmaker is because the grass is green. You know, photosynthesis. It's where living things use the sun's energy and they breathe in carbon dioxide, and then they break off the carbon atoms to use as building blocks, which is pretty crazy. Trees literally grow out of thin air. Everything that you see that's plant life is made out of carbon it pulled out of the air. And because they get their energy from the sun, they've got no need for the oxygen, and they exhale it. And they do that at a rate faster than the oxygen can find a new partner, and that leaves free oxygen in the air for us to breathe in. We breathe out carbon dioxide, so the trees can breathe that back in and continue to grow. Long story short, if a planet isn't green, we wouldn't be able to breathe, or so we thought. But recently we found oxygen in the ocean, which isn't that weird, right? 50% of the world's oxygen comes from organisms that made photosynthesis a water sport. What is weird is where in the ocean that oxygen was found. Three miles down on the ocean floor. Turns out going that deep gets pretty dark. So when scientists were sniffing around where the sun don't shine, they were expecting much lower levels of oxygen. Because you know the sun happens to be an important part of photosynthesis, and, and, and there was none down there. However, they actually found increased levels of oxygen on the ocean floor, and they're like, that's weird, our equipment's broken, and they sent it back to get recalibrated, like five times. And they're still like, nah. There's no possible way oxygen levels are higher down there, uh, something's wrong with our equipment, uh, we're just gonna ignore this. That is until they came back to a similar area to do a mining survey with different types of equipment, and still found that the oxygen levels were a lot higher than what they should have been. So finally they're like, okay, maybe we should look into this a little bit more. And it turned out that the oxygen was actually coming from polymetallic nodes on the ocean floor. It's a fancy way of saying uh, little rocks made out of multiple types of metal. They figured out that these little metal rocks were causing the increase in oxygen, but they couldn't figure out how. One of the scientists had a eureka moment when somebody referred to them as battery rocks because they're made up of the types of materials you need to make batteries. And he went and he stuck his trusty multimeter on it and it turns out that these rocks have a charge of nearly a volt. So these rocks are legitimately batteries. And being exposed to salt water, they slowly corrode, and as they corrode, they release a consistent electrical charge. And then there's so many of them in this area scattered across the ocean floor that they amplify each other's voltage, and that causes electrolysis. And all electrolysis is is when water molecules are split into hydrogen and oxygen when an electrical current is applied to them. Which is crazy. These are basically just natural AA batteries dropped in a fish tank, creating oxygen without photosynthesis. And that has upended our understanding of how life possibly came to exist on our planet and could exist on other planets. This means that Neil deGrasse Tyson and the entire scientific community was wrong and you don't technically need a green planet to support enough free oxygen that would support life. But with this discovery comes some concerns because companies are very eager to mine these rocks as they contain all the valuable materials needed to make batteries. As of now, we have no idea how important these nodes are to the ecosystem on the ocean floor. The oxygen they create could be vital to supporting life in the deep. But while scientists study that, the fact that oxygen originates organically from ore objects in the ocean outside of optical operation, well, that is pretty mind-boggling.